So from a distance, yeah. we just see this guy smacking. So we, because obviously we probably we don't like know what 80 he was meters hitting. away. Yeah, yeah. So he's just smacking the vehicle. We couldn't see if it was a <laughs> fist, a flat hand. Obviously, the moment we got closer, we saw he was yeah. flat handing, slapping this vehicle. He was slapping the windscreen and then the side of the car. Yeah. So we get close enough, we see the windscreen is cracked completely. Completely, yeah. But this guy, he looked pretty big. <laughs> Have you ever met Miss Lindy? She's a guy with the bright red hair. This podcast is sponsored by Nutricon. If you look in the link in the description below, you can find the discount code for 20% off. 20% off on Nutricon products. 2022. Guys, 2021 is pretty hectic. Actually just watched the series, well, movie type thing called Death to 2021. I advise you guys to go watch that. So... I actually tried to start watching it the other day. You must get, watch it. I didn't it. get around to that. No, it's quite funny. So, let's crack this 2021 off. 2022, <laughs> sorry. Crisp <laughs> monster, courtesy of Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one sounded crisp as fuck. Spilt a little bit, but Sheesh. I got my two main co-hosts for a banter podcast. Kieran and Chris, welcome. Thank Good you, sir. Back. Another good to be back. First one of 2022. Yep. Hope yeah. everyone's had a good How's year. Holidays? Jesse can start it off. <laughs> so my, my, holiday, my holiday was good. Bro. We had some exciting things happen, some scary things happen, a few fights that we saw happen, which was, you know, something that's you don't normally see every day. On South Africa, you probably see it more often than anywhere else. Yeah. Aggressive Dutchman. <laughs> uh, we actually uh, we we stereotyping. We assume he was an Afrikaans guy. Yeah. But based okay. on his actions and the based on the car he was driving, most likely. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what. We don't know what he. We're not sure. Like we looked, he looked Afrikaans, but then on the other hand, he didn't look Afrikaans. Can't really say. Do you want another story? He was he wasn't wearing short shorts, so that's why no. we weren't sure. Is but we are stereotyping now just because he drove a Ford Ranger. Yeah, he drove a Ford Ranger. So <laughs> we're, we're joking around, guys. I drive a Fortuna. That's another of the. And you drive car. a Ford Ranger as well. So actually, no, you can't really. I, we can't really. I say don't that. own a Ford Ranger. Okay, well, you kind of do sometimes when you want to drive it. Okay, back to the story, Chris. Kick it off, bro. Okay, so let's start the story off. How do I sugarcoat it? No, I'm joking. Don't. No, <laughs> so we're coming back from the Eastern Cape. So Jesse and I went on holiday now over New Year's and we are on our way back and the girlfriends are sleeping in the back of the car. Jesse and I are driving and we get to uh, an intersection, what is it, a T-junction you could say? Yeah, yeah a T-junction. So, we so, the, so the road we were turning on was a highway basically, yeah. or a main road, and the one we were on was, you know, a very quiet road yeah. that came from a little village. So it's basically sitting like this, you can't see it, chilling like that. We come in this way. So we indicate to go left. And you know those little Toyota, Avanda, like the taxis yes, that you see yeah, in four yeah. ways a lot? Yeah. Those oaks. You know how those oaks drive. They don't give a shit about life. Really. They just cruise. <laughs> but we weren't even in four ways. We are in the eastern we Cape. Yeah, we're not even in four ways. And those oaks in four ways know how to drive those things. But nonetheless, this oak decides now it's a stop street for us. He doesn't stop. He doesn't see the stop sign. Nothing. He just goes. We look to the right. Next minute, this four, um, Ford Ranger with a trailer behind it slams on brakes. But this Toyota Vanza didn't like swerve or anything. Eh? It just it literally just carried on going. He didn't even like move into another lane or anything. He just carried on in that lane. So this Ford Ranger swerves. The whole works gets out of the way. Literally almost hitting this oak in the car. So we're like, oh shit, check of that. Look, look, look. Next minute we watch our turn to turn left. We're watching this. The Ford Ranger starts cutting off this Toyota Avanza. So we're like, oh, shit. It's about <laughs> to go down. Someone's going to fuck somebody up. So they cut each other off. Eventually they stop. This oak gets out of his Ford Ranger and just walks up to this oak's Toyota. And when I say flat hands the window, like full on road rage, flat hands the oak's windshield, so from a distance, yeah. we just see this guy smacking. So we, because obviously we probably we don't like know what 80 he was meters hitting. away. Yeah, yeah. So he's just smacking the vehicle. We couldn't see if it was a <laughs> fist, a flat hand. Obviously, the moment we got closer, we saw he was yeah. flat handing, slapping this vehicle. He was slapping the windscreen and then the side of the car. Yeah. So we get close enough. We see the windscreen is cracked completely. Yeah. But this guy, he looked pretty big. Yeah. Like he definitely had probably a big hand. Because I mean, if I tried <laughs> to flat hand the windscreen, you might have also often, been wearing a ring. 
Maybe. Even after that first lap, I'm going to stop because the windscreen's hard. Yeah, no, <laughs> 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 then your the hand, guy bro. in the Vanza with his family, a local guy, opens the door or the Ranger driver open the door. And then we, as we driving past, just check this guy go and clock the driver. Yeah. And, the, and this guy had about a family of six, seven. You know how the Eastern Cape is, yeah, how they yeah, travel. Yeah, yeah. These families maybe visiting other people in a village or whatever. Hits this guy. And then obviously walks off and proceeds to go in, into his car. <laughs> but it was heck. Like we saw all of this happen in the space of like 100 meters because we were at the stop street. Then we were driving. I'm like, Chris, get your phone out. Quick, get your phone out. <laughs> But then we drove past too fast, and then obviously we didn't get it on camera. Yeah, but it was catching. it was a very exciting thing to see at six in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's, <laughs> it was six in the morning. But that did you see that, that brings up the whole thing now, like this, like how we debated in the car afterwards when we when we passed it. We're like, okay, who's in the wrong here now? Okay, so you got the oak in They're the both Toyota. In the wrong. Yeah, you got the oak in the Toyota Avanza with his family in the car. You've got the Oak in the Ford Ranger also coming back from holiday with his wife and his kids in the car now. So now the Oak in the Ford Ranger, his life was in danger. That's why he most likely acted the way that he did. I think to the extent of smashing the windshield, like my argument in the car was smashing the windshield is stupid. That's just dumb. Be like a biker, you get your biker, etc. If a taxi cuts him off, they just smash the side mirror off yeah. completely. So my extent to is, that... Is that considered... Reasonable. Look, I'd rather do that. At least my brother. Then he picks up his side mirror, he throws it in the car, and then he can go replace it or fix it. No, 100%. but can, a windshield. Can he, can he? Okay, but can maybe not. Can that can't particular it. guy from, you know, Butterworth? Yes. Who earns two thousand rand a month? Yeah. Replace it. Probably not, bro. He'll probably make a plan to replace it or find it, but a windshield on the other hand... Or you'll just never replace it. Or you'll just never, exactly. Yeah. But the windshield on the other hand, now let's say we don't know where he was going. He could have been going a far distance. You're telling me now I must drive 800 kilometers with a sh like smashed windshield well, and not be able to see. The more you drive, the more, the more the cracks are going exactly. to run. Exactly. So well. now, you know, that's an extreme. But like the, the side mirror, you maybe... You just drive like a dog. The guy was wrong for the driving window. the way he did. Yeah. No, but of the course. Way the oak retaliated was wrong I also think so 100%. both obviously I mean the guy cut the guy off he turned into his lane like I understand I the guy was angry and I would also be angry or something if that happened to me mm. but not to the extent where I'm gonna yeah. go smash the oak's windshield and then <laughs> deck him 2022 <laughs> people take a fucking chill pill we don't need any more road rage in South Africa we have enough never gonna, that's never gonna happen <laughs> and, and your holiday bro how was yours so it was a good three days <laughs> yeah you worked most of December huh? I worked until the 31st yeah um that was shit. <laughs> That's how you make and the money, bro. That's how you gotta get going. And then, yeah, I just went to Belito from literally last week, Friday, and I flew back yesterday morning. So, but it was good. What it lasted. Weather was terrible. You have a nice break because obviously you just finished the show basically at the end of last year. <laughs> wasn't you? Yeah, well, it wasn't even a break. Well, bro. a break from, you know, a more serious prep. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, 100%. Even if you're still working, it's nicer to not have to diet while you're working yeah, yeah. than having to diet and work and it's December. Yeah, 100%. No, no, that was, that was at least nice. But um, even in Belita, it was honestly, it wasn't even a break. Like, it was, it was nonstop. We didn't even get time to chill. Were you getting phone calls and that for work while you were there? I was. Yeah. Is that, uh, okay. but I wasn't, so no, but I wasn't, I only answered all my emails on okay. the, the third. So uh, the day okay. before I flew home, then I only answered the emails. Okay, no, that's fine. Friday, that's Saturday, fine. Sunday, I was like, no, I'm just going to leave it. But isn't it, we're in a difficult position in our lives where, even if it's the 29th of um, December, if you don't answer an email, you look unprofessional. Like yeah. We are at a time. I mean, majority of people understand. Like, so, like, I had a bunch of inquiries that came through on the f Saturday and the Sunday. And then Monday morning, I got back to all of them. Okay, yeah, it's understandable yeah. Saturday and Sunday. But and, I I mean, and I said to them, like, I am away. So, yeah. yeah. You know, if there's an away email or yeah. away message or whatever. But, I mean, we live in a time where, you know, your clients are WhatsApping you. You know, your listings on the website, they can go straight from that listing or WhatsApp you. Yeah. If they see, hey, this agent's online, why isn't he replying to me? Then you might look at Yeah, so if someone, if someone WhatsApps me, then I'll reply straight away, yeah. Yeah. regardless of where I am. It <clears throat> doesn't matter if I'm out, whatever, I'll reply. Because like you said, they're, they're going to see that I'm online. Um, and also you're on and social media, so they might see, hey, Kieran's <laughs> there on the beach and he's not replying to my inquiry. Um, but if it's an email, then I can at least kind of get away with leaving it to the next day if I'm, if I'm away, you know? Yeah. Um, then it's at least reasonable because then they can't, <laughs> can't see. But most, well, every single client that I got back to, they, I told them I was away and they were all like, no, it's fine. 
majority of them are actually only back next week anyway. Yeah. They just... Well, people just scroll and they see something they like and they just... I mean, they click one button and I get the email. So, yeah. yeah. And now you're going to plan on going away, getting a little bit of a break, you know, maybe fair. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the last... <laughs> those three and a half days was like my first holiday in two years, bro. Sure. <laughs> Besides from when we went to Hootsbreit. Yeah. Um, that was quite cool. We must do that again. Yeah, we must. Um, but, you know, this year I definitely want to travel a bit more 100 percent um because also i don't want to prep anytime soon either yeah aim aim for the end of the year so it gives me time to just do other stuff yeah as well, yeah well bro, speaking of belito and being like a more expensive holiday so we were in the trans guy and one of the guys he owns a farm there in the eastern cape yeah. and then obviously owns the cottage there right on the beach and he made a comment to us says you know we live a millionaire lifestyle for you know next to nothing and it's and it's true because i mean if you compare belito if you look at belito a property right on the beachfront you know literally like an apartment and it's like four million right? yeah literally yep. an apartment tiny little place we had a eight ten bedroom cottage mm. right on the beach and i think that'll probably sell for two million yeah and it's only it was i think about thirty thousand rand yeah. for almost 18 days which is actually nothing. If you look at what we did, we could literally walk from our doorstep, go into the beach. Yeah. We could go, and also, I mean, there's 10 people. So if you're splitting 30,000 rand for 10 people, you know, it's not that much at the it's end of the day. Each. Yeah, literally. Three grand if, for, if all the people are paying, obviously. Three, well, two and a half week holiday. Yeah, that's, that's nothing, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. And you get to go in right there and you get to fish. You get to right there and you get to surf. Right there and you get to... You know, walk on the beach right there. You get to go and take the buggy and go do all these things for, let's say, 3,000 yeah. Rand for 20 days. If you go to the Belito, you go to the in Cape Town. No, it'll cost you. Know, you. Pe- people paying 3,000 Rand a night yeah. in Cape Town. Yeah. So, like, that's what's nice about the Eastern Cape and why I think my family always goes, Sasha's family always goes. It's because it's relatively cheap to get, you know, whatever you want. You know, mm. people stay in a cottage they bring obviously a cost to bring to pay for a jet ski but they bring the jet ski down yeah they launch it on the beach they take they go deep sea fishing they go like there's so much that you can do there for everything's right there, you know yeah. next to nothing yeah. then you get those people that you know want to be in cape town and yeah. want to be at all these expensive places just because you know it's cape town and yeah. belize is also it's very very busy bro yeah like but it's just i think like it's you want to go for dinner yeah and you can rock up to the restaurant doesn't matter if it's at 2 p.m. or if it's at 7, you're going to go there and you've got to wait to get the table. Yeah. But I think it's all just certain aspects uh, with regards to comparing. Look, it's like we were comparing price-wise now. Obviously, you'd rather go for the cheaper option, but it, it also depends on the lifestyle that you want to live. If you're that person that's happy to where you f- kind of forced to relax, like that's how I would describe the holiday that we had now. It's... You have to relax. Yeah. You've got no choice. You don't have... You can't just take the car, drive five minutes, and then you've got this certain place that you want to go to or you're at a bar or anything like that. I think that's what's, what's nice about the Eastern Cape in the sense, like if you believe to Cape Town and that stuff, you've got everything at your disposal basically, mm-hmm. but that's where obviously your yeah. money flies straight yeah. out of your pockets because you go now... For Cape Town, for instance, you're like, oh, let's go to the Blue Peter there in Blowberg Strand or wherever it is. You go there, you drop 700 Rand for an afternoon lunch. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, when you in, like even in, in... Okay, obviously Belito is nowhere near as expensive as, yeah, as yeah. Cape Town. Um, <clears throat> but even in Belito, like when you're there with all your mates, like there was quite a few of us there and you don't want to eat... At home, you don't want to yeah. cook food. You don't want to, yes. you know. You you wake up in the morning and you're like, you'll maybe make a breakfast or whatever. But then, you know, you go to the beach and then you go somewhere for lunch and then you go out somewhere for for dinner and then you, it's so you constantly just eating out and stuff the whole time. I mean, well. we would literally, obviously, okay. Chris caught two fish. Good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch I anything, but literally, all you. the cottages around us, you know, they were just they would catch like five or six fish. They're like, okay, cool, let's deep fry them. Um, you know, yeah take the scales off, yeah. debone it, everything, and cook it right there. And you literally have a fresh fish two hours later. I mean, we had so much sure. fish. There was 10 of us about, and I think it was about five or six fish, and there was yeah. fish left over for the next two or three days. I think you know, like that kind of thing where it's mm. that fresh. Mm. And it's, you know, obviously they know how to cook it. They know how yeah, to yeah. do the whole process. I wouldn't be able to do it. But, you know, just having that ability, being for me, especially now with being, getting into cycling, it was so nice to be able to just get on my bike, go ride, you know, 30, 40 Ks through the villages, you know, ducking between cows, 
seeing baby pigs like literally being born on the side of the road, <laughs> yeah, you know, see, seeing goats, <laughs> yeah. seeing little township kids walking with a puppy. Like you're not going to see that in the other places, but obviously no. it depends what you want. Like I, w- I would prefer to like do something like that, to be honest. Like, yeah, we'll take the buggy like, and we'll just go out and we'll yeah, go do donuts I, in my... Yeah. Even like, Mozambique, like every time I've gone to Mozambique, like I've been... We used to go to Mozambique every single year, literally for probably like nearly 15 years in a row. And not once did we go to Ponta de Oro. It's too commercialized. Because it's commercial. It is. It's, it's not commercialized. that commercialized, but it's commercialized. Yeah. Not you know, so African commercialized, but it's African commercialized. But I suppose you could say like the holiday we had now would be similar to how Kieran's explaining yeah. about his Mozambican holiday except for Ponta Dora, but like, way further, it's, like uh, it's that kind of vibe, yeah, so you know. You, you can, take the go, water, whatever water further. you need, yeah. you take it with you because you're yeah. not going to get any water anywhere else. Exactly. There's a place in Mozambique where it's literally just like the furthest point um, called Morangulo. And there's literally, there's nothing. You take everything with you, everything. There's nothing. There. The, the, the site where you stay because it's quite far up, it's a 16 hour drive, you know, so it's like to Ponte de Aura and then like an extra six, six seven yeah. hours on top of that. Um, and it's literally just like a forest of palm trees and then there's a few sites in yeah. the forest and you literally walk out and two meters, the, the forest kind of stops and then it's just a beach and the beach is like 200 meters long and the water, there's no waves or anything, yeah. like that. it's just flat. That was cool. We said, I mean, we stayed there for like two weeks and there was a few of us. There was also, there was like 14 of us and that was all we needed, like a little shield. Yeah. No, that's lacquer, bro. It's, it's nice. We need that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, See, and then you also get to unwind. You get to relax. But that's the thing. Like now when mm. I was in Belito, it was just nonstop. Yeah. Like every morning it was okay, this, this and this and this and then it was go out here and then we do here and then we go here. Well, the same and thing. like you want to because you don't necessarily, that's the thing, when you're in Belize, you also don't want to just sit around yeah. and do nothing. Yeah, yeah. But you you come in from a that's the thing you come in from a city that's busy nonstop. You get back and you you going back to you, you go it. on holiday to a city yeah. that's busy nonstop. Yeah, you need to go find a place that's excluded and cut off from absolutely everything. Yeah. Where you have to you know if you want to eat good seafood you catch the damn seafood catch yourself. <laughs> If but that's also, we were busy though. Like, it's not like no, we, we were, were sitting there chilling, no, watching no. the waves. You know, we'd yeah, wake up. There's a, there a lot to do. We'd walk three Ks, climb yeah. some rocks, catch yeah. some mussels, mm. you know, carry them back in buckets, five kilo, 10 kilogram buckets. You get back from the three Ks, you clean the mussels, then you boil them, then yeah. you pick them yourselves. And, you know, that's that cool. kind of stuff yeah. is nice. Yeah. And it's nice to do that. It's nice to be able to go and just experience. Yeah. Like doing we went to a waterfall where. You know, like that water, yeah, that waterfall no, that, that obviously most of it was man-made where mm. we swam. But, you know, where else can you really just go, hop in there, go and swim? Look over the ledge. Nobody's mm. been there. I mean, you okay, maybe like 10 people a yeah. year go yeah. where we went. Because, I mean, the roads, we had to stop at a point and then walk down a mm. crazy steep hill, then climb through some bushes and then get there. And you know, the views are crazy. It's so untouched by man because it's in such a rural area mm. yeah. that it almost feels special that you get to experience it. Yeah, and I don't think anyone just goes there because it's it's more of if you grew up in that area, you know where it is. But if you're a random tourist who's just gone to the Eastern Cape, now you're not going to know anything about that place. It's not going to be on Google Maps or anything. It's just pure knowledge of someone. And that's why, like with Uncle Alan, he obviously knew and knows about it. Uncle Eddie, they knew exactly where it was. So it's like, cool, we go in there. And, I mean, it's not every day you get to – look literally over the ledge of a waterfall and what i don't know how far that dropped down was it's like 60 meters yeah so it was it 30, was it no. was higher but it was high. It might be man-made but nonetheless it's still a waterfall and it's still something to see so but on the yeah. other side of the coin you know going to cape town going to those nice restaurants having drinks at the nice places it's chilling on the fun. beach it's awesome so it's yeah, also cool. it, is. it is awesome of course like when us well basically the whole of Joburg was in uh, cape town for december yeah. And I was I won't lie, like when I was at home working, I was like, "Yo, actually, kind of wish well, I was in like Cape Town." Yeah, <laughs> yeah it looks pretty dope. But I could only, I, I wouldn't be able to do like two weeks. Yeah, That's too especially much. financially. I mean, you go spend like you could spend sixty thousand rand in Cape Town in two weeks. Uh, easy. Yeah. Whereas I mean, I'd yeah. rather go spend sixty thousand rand and go skiing. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you need a way up. Obviously, you know, might not be able to, but you got to kind of weigh up the pros and cons of you know what am I getting? Because I mean, I think in total. This whole holiday probably cost each of us, you know, max three thousand rand. 
obviously because Sasha's parents and those people, we went with them, so they paid for accommodations. Yeah. We just had to cover food, food and petrol and costs yeah, and that yeah. kind of stuff. And I mean, max three thousand rand. Obviously, and that's probably that's with with nothing. with going to a restaurant, with maybe okay, excluding the drinks we bought. Like, but I mean, still at the end of the day, what we got, I would prefer to do that personally. Yeah. Every December, because you force. I mean, you can't. Yeah. We went into town to fetch Chris and Steph. And like you get in that mindset, we're like, oh, there's traffic now. Oh, there's this. Because oh, obviously they flew and we drove. So we went and fetched them. And you go to the shops and like half an hour in the shop, you're dead tired. Yeah. And it's just such a different lifestyle. Obviously coming back to South Africa, I mean, back to Joburg, it's a completely different lifestyle, even more. I mean, East London is relatively, obviously very busy, but it's a quiet lifestyle compared to, you know, Joburg. Yeah, Joburg's busy. But even East London was draining compared to the chilled vibes we were Bet having you, yeah. on the beach. Yeah. I think it's also the biggest thing, especially with like my gener, like people my age, they would Bro, rather. You're not that much younger than us. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, our generation. What year Be- were you born? Ninety-nine. Exactly. If you're still born before two thousand, <laughs> you're in the same. Uh, I say you're yeah, in the same no. as us. Okay, born from two thousand onwards is a yeah. different story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, uh, they're just obsessed with. You know, they would rather go out to somewhere like Cape Town. Where they can go to whatever fancy club they can find. Long so Street Boy. So they can <laughs> make post sure about it. they yeah. can post about it. Because people like seeing it and because yeah. people like looking like they're doing well. Yeah. No, Meanwhile, parents are funding most of the trip. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exa- exactly that. And you being in real estate, there's been a shift where, you know, people, let's say, even our generation, care more about experiences and traveling and looking the part as opposed to maybe buying a property compared to our parents' generation or the 30 to yeah. 60 generation, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They care about, you know, setting down roots and making sure that they're financially sound for the next 20, 30 years when they retire for their kids or whatever. But the kids of today, us included, you know, our generation, it's more just, you know, what car can I drive? I'll live yeah. in a small flat, yeah. suite. And it's, I think it's, an, yeah, it's, the, it's, the, it's the mindset of, you know, our continent actually. Literally, yeah. It's a sad reality of life, <laughs> Marco. But anyway. But yeah, no, New Year's resolutions, guys? What's our... What's our th- well, you asked the question. You go first, bro. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> well, geez, like it, okay. No time to think. <laughs> no, I think... Uh, my New Year's resolution, obviously, just... I, th- I don't even told you. Um, from a, a health and lifestyle... Well, from a health perspective, I definitely think... Like, I mean, after my injury, I've let myself, I've just been, yeah, gym is, <laughs> gym is non-existent. I've just been eating whatever the hell I want. But I think this year definitely, and I mean, that's probably going to be the most cliche thing that everybody says. It's just to maintain a casual, like a, a decent looking body type yeah. throughout the year. You know, not go, go through these fluctuations where I do a show prep, I get ripped for, and then after that, I lose it all. And then I would like, diet again, get a little bit leaner, then pick it up. I want to just try maintain a, yeah. a moderate well, unless you're body doing shape throughout the an year. Actual off season, yeah. Obviously, it's yeah. Different. But then, but then you're still dieting, you're still eating. Well, but there's you know, a difference you're, between you're like fat. an off season, yes. off season, fat, off season you... fat and alcohol and yes. McDonald's fat. Yes, it's, it's, it's a difference. There is, but that's that's my thing. You know, I don't want to. I want to try just straight away. Of like obviously now after 2021. I've kind of seen, okay, I have my, like my body at the moment is looking absolute shite. So <laughs> it needs to, <laughs> it needs to, but I need that, that goal for 2022 now is I need to find a show date. Mm. Be like, okay, cool. I'm doing that. Yeah. And I'm going to take the step up. I'm going to try and do men's physique. I'm going to give it a bash. Um, NPC. Yeah, I want to move. And just give yourself, don't, you know, there's no need to go find a show that's now in the next four months. No, yeah, no, next okay. five, you know, like End of the year. End of the, exact, mm. end, of, end of the year. Give, August, us, give yourself the time October, yeah. to, to build and, and, and improve. Yeah, I think, I think that, I think that would be the mindset because I definitely, look, I enjoyed athletic physique. Well, I mean, I only did one show for athletic physique, but my whole thing is what I've seen from athletic physique side in that particular uh side in the federation there it's just it's it's so just once i suppose one side everywhere but it's just from what i saw it's just like it's the same oaks winning over and over again politics so i'm like i'm done with that i don't i mean yeah so i'll give mpc a bash 
give men's physique a bash. I might as well I'm do it. Push my body to a new limit and see what I can do. But then I definitely think you're maintaining that same size and same like a decent look throughout the whole year and not fluctuating so badly. I think that's definitely my biggest goal for this year. So we'll see how that goes. And other than competing? Yeah, well, look, I don't... Well, you got you got a goal yeah. of getting a place now. Like yeah, that I've kind of got, stuff. A, got yeah. a goal of moving into a, ho- into a house or into a, a complex and that stuff. So that's, that's definitely a goal. Uh, I think from a work perspective, uh, moving up with my sports, um, I've already I've been told that... You know, with regards to rugby and cricket and that stuff, I'm slowly moving up the ranks. So, I mean, you move, look, like in school with with me especially, if I'm coaching an under-15 B and C team rugby and then they want to move me to a senior age group now, that's considered to be a promotion at schoolboy rugby level uh, because then you're taking on bigger priority with yeah. senior boys, yeah. you're not dealing with the little oaks anymore. And all of that stuff. So that's the talk for me. But will that will just come along? But I mean, I you even you're going to Cape Town tomorrow. Yeah, and so I mean that's also more responsibility already. That's the thing. You know what? I mean, out of all the cricket coaches they could possibly choose, I was fortunate enough to be chosen to go. So I'm going with my under 15 A cricket boys, and then the first team are going as well. So we're off to Cape Town tomorrow for six days um, for tour, and then yeah, I think that already is a step. You know. Moving in the right direction with good way to start the year. Yeah, stepping up with regards to uh, school, stepping up with my sport for the school and all of that stuff. So, yeah, we'll take it as it comes. Eh? Nice little trip to Cape Town. I don't have to umpire. That's the main <laughs> yeah. thing. I don't have to stand <laughs> Is it in pole. Like 50 overs, 20? What do so, you guys play? I don't know. Um, well, I don't think there's any T20s. I think, as far as my understanding goes, we do have 50 over games and then there's time games. So, I'm not 100% sure how the time fixtures work. That, I think, is just you play until the sun goes down, uh, whereas obviously 50 overs is 50 overs. But, the, look, the benefit of this whole tour is we don't have to umpire as coaches that are going down. So because it's a big tour, they bring in umpires and qualified umpires to umpire the yeah. games and all of yeah. that stuff. Us as coaches, we just sit on the side and look pretty and watch the game man. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they come over if we have drinks break tell, speak to them ask them what their strats are for the game and then that's it so I literally might be coming a bit tanner hopefully but you definitely got some shade this December you got a darker oh, shade yes yeah I got a darker shade after going through a spell of being red my, yes. <laughs> my back is also peeling now Dude, unfortunately it's so bad like my neck is still so sensitive yeah it's peeling but it's still so sensitive. My love handles have still got little red marks on them. <laughs> it's really bad. But I'm, I'm, I'm brown now. My arms and calves hold the tan. The rest, but yeah. I think it's my freckles that make me look brown. So <laughs> Your goals, bro? My goals? Uh, business-wise, obviously just want to be... Um, well, I basically just want to... Do it. Do better. <laughs> Triple yeah. at least, you know, what I did last year. I mean, lo- last year, business-wise, was a very good year for me. Um, but I know that I can do a lot more. So that's definitely the focus. Um, I want to be, I want to consistently be, you know, one of the top agents in, in Remax, like, throughout the year. So that's pretty much the goal. You know, I did, I was the top agent for a few months last year. So I would like to. That's good. Be more consistent with that and keep that. Remax you know. your area. Yeah. Or? So basically, so we have different offices. So my office is the Bryanson office, where people from the Bryanson office work. You know, my area. So I, you know, I do like four ways, Broad Acres, Danefer, and I've got property in Santon, Ulover. So the prop, the 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 office is obviously in Bryanson, but we work. You know, agents work. I've got listings in Bedford View. Mm. So it's really just. You know, all over the place. But yeah. And then, same with the online coaching as well. Just want to be like the best online coach I can be as well. Yeah. Yep. On business, fitness? Business, and yeah, you business. And you, fitness, fitness for yourself? Fitness, fitness. Off season now. I think it's off to a decent start. So I just want to keep at it. So not too much drinking this December. <laughs> <laughs> I had two days, two days of drinking. Obviously drank on New Year's and then the day, not the day after New Year's, the two, uh, New Year's was on a Friday. 
So it was the Friday and then the Sunday. I was about to say, if you drank on the Saturday, Kieran, you clearly <laughs> didn't drink enough on the Friday, my bros, because <laughs> shit. Yeah, so, but that was also, it was the first time I had actually drank properly. Um, when I say properly, it's my version of, of properly. What, one beer, <laughs> one beer, then you piss. <laughs> How much did you drink? New Year's. I, 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 I don't know. So you drank that much uh, that you no, don't it, know? It, it was a lot. Like I was, I, I was far from sober. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, wasn't, close I wasn't to like, up? okay. Mm, no. You never feel sick. No. no so I, was, the next I was okay. Okay. I was okay. Yeah. It's the um, benefit of you gym junkies, bro. You cheap dates, bro. <laughs> huh? but, Just um, one or two beers and one shot. It was, it was the first time that like, right drank properly since since last New Year's. New Year's. So it was literally yeah, 12 yeah. months on the dot. So... <laughs> <laughs> you must have been stumbling, bro. There's no ways. Like a 12-month break of not I drinking alcohol. Composed. And then you go and drink. Like <laughs> I went, no, New Year's wasn't even that bad, to be honest. It was the Sunday. The Sunday that was bad. I got <laughs> when I got I was with my family. Yeah. And my dad's mates. And, and, and we oh, know they drink. Oh. And that's the thing, my family, they love to party. So that was like a whole I just went with it. I was like. Let's, let's, let's have go. Some time. <laughs> but like, you, you, let's need, go. you need to have those times where you come. No, that, but the thing, like, it was fun. Just like, it was fun. Oh, exactly. I, I'm not gonna th- like, it, guys. It's one night to you. I'm not gonna think about losing muscle. Yeah. From the alcohol tonight, like you kind of you can't live your life. No, though. not like Listen, I mean, one day or two one days, days of drinking. Right, from out of 365, <laughs> there's no way any. it's gonna affect no. you. But with regards to your fitness, fitness, myself, honestly, long story short, it's just pro card. Pro card. Same goal, just different year. Yeah. Pro card. Obviously, I mean, last prep physically and everything was amazing. Mm. Um, just had a lot of other stuff as well. So hopefully this year just... But physically, that other stuff didn't affect your physical. Yeah. Like it might have, you know, made things more difficult it to get to the made end things more difficult. It made, it, it made the process a lot less but enjoyable. Yeah, but you couldn't you know, have usually looked Usually I really, really enjoy my preps. You know, like I love this time, like... It wasn't more difficult. It wasn't, you know, the prep was going as good as it possibly could have. Yeah. Um, but it just wasn't as enjoyable as, as last prep. But, yeah. I mean, it's expected. But having that, you know, struggles that you went through, it's not like it made, you couldn't have looked better on the day. You couldn't have. 100%. It was, it was the best that I've yeah. ever looked. It's unfortunate what happened on yeah. the day. But Have you heard any feedback of that? Because, I mean, we haven't discussed that. <laughs> I did ask. Um, but didn't really, yeah, no, didn't really get much, okay. much feedback. I mean, to be honest, I mean, it's not like the judges actually knew what happened backstage, you know. Yeah. You know, for them, they they saw a guy come on stage and be like, oh, he's just not posing fit or whatever the mm. case is. You know, he's all over the place. But in terms of your physique, I got told I wasn't my my usual confident self. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the feedback I got, but <laughs> which is true to an extent because after what happened, I did obviously like, I was kind of just like. Ugh, Screw this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after what happened, I was kind of obviously just demotivated me a bit. Yeah. Um, I just wish we had, you know, more posing rounds and stuff like that. That would have been cool as well. Because once I did come right and start and I felt better and stuff like that, you know, then I probably could have got on stage and actually posed You didn't a do bit, your routine that you practiced either. No, unfortunately not. Sure. That, that was a big bummer. Was um, that because of time constraints or what? A- or? Apparently, but the show was running on. Uh, the show was running on time, yeah. but they cancelled the routines because they said it was taking too long. So yeah, I think uh, they, because the Friday ran so late. I think they yeah, were worried that was, the Saturday was yes. going to run late. So they're like, yeah. "Well, let's just scrap something that they've been working on an hour every yeah. day for the last twelve weeks." <laughs> I mean, so much, like, I mean honestly, it was dis- thing, honestly yeah. it was it was very disappointing. Like it sucked because I was looking forward to doing the routine mm. and everything like that, but. It is what it is, I guess. Dude, these, these, like, these federations need to sort this shit out. Every single federation like, is, come on, there's issues man. everywhere. Like, there's going to be issues. But yeah. it, is, it is. It's not even just NBC. Like and when and my, my, for summer bodies as well. Dude, what, uh, I left there that night at quarter to 12 at night from Pretoria. Like, I don't understand, you know, this whole logic behind you want to run on time. Oh, no, we're having technical difficulties. Oh, no, we've got this. Oh, no, we need to have a 15-minute break. Fuck your breaks. Just <laughs> carry on with the show. Then when it is time for the break, have it, don't come up with your own imaginary breaks because, no, you need to drink water. Carry on with the show. Get it done. Then everybody can go home. You know, and the thing is, yeah, you know, I'm, bullshit, I'm sure it happens overseas as well. No, it does. I'm, I'm sure it happens. It does. The thing we obviously Fuck. just we will never ever hear about it. Well, when I did WFF in Canada, it 
the morning they're like, guys, you're going on at 12. 12 01, I was on stage. Okay, so really? maybe they are a little bit jacked. Like, obviously, I mean, I don't know about WFF now, mm. but it was the biggest federation back then when I was yeah. doing it, you mm. know, obviously other than the Olympia. Like, it was basically just those two. And, I mean, everything was on time. We, everyone was looked after. Yeah, other than the politics in terms of who was going to win, they had already established that yes, the yeah. day before the show, which they, I think they, they still do that now. Yeah, no, that's Everybody still knows they do that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was having a discussion with someone who was talking to, I, I'm not going to say which federation or whatever, yeah. but they were talking to the organizers and the organizers were saying, you know, this person, this person, 99% sure they're going to win tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, like you can't, fair. even if you th look at them on social media and you look at their competitions, like, okay, this person's the best. Yeah. You can't have this preconceived idea mm. in your head that, you know, they are going to be the best. Yeah. And let's already, because then on the day, you're going to like sway more towards them other way. Yeah, yeah because you kind of believed it the whole, yeah. the whole okay. time. Yeah. But that will always be, a, it's always been, I mean, yeah. even when my dad used to compete. I mean, my dad competed 2000 up until 2005, somewhere along there. Um, and same shit as well. Same thing. It was the exact same there. They already knew before they got onto stage who was going to win. They already knew. Like my dad, there were certain times when my dad looked brilliant and he should have gone in the first place and he fell short. And you can go ask him now, he'll tell you. It's like that's how they, that's how they are. So it's, I think it's, that's always going to be a thing that we can't fight. But the whole timing and when in shit needs to happen, that shit can be fixed. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, okay, if you think he should win it, that's fine. You can give him the title first place. But at least fucking run your show on time. It's not Especially that when you've difficult. had 30, 50 shows to get experience from. Exactly. You've had it. You've done. They were, like, all these people do, they have, what, like, some eight, 10 shows a year. And we also, like, we're not on. just calling out, you know, one federation. No, it's, it's all, all the federations. It's all everyone. the exact same. Like, it's... Every federation that I've competed in. Exactly. I've, uh, yeah. no, like, you've done more shows than what I have. And, like, I've got... I'm not bad-mouthing any federations, but every show that I've done, regardless of what federation it has been in, has run late. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's, like it's just now when like kind of just you kind of expect it or prepare for it to happen in advance. No, you must, you must. You, you just, yeah, if you're not, you know, then it's also kind of your own fault mm, because yeah. there is also. I mean, I can't imagine it's easy to have the show run on time either. You no, know, I don't think thing, we don't yeah. have yeah. the number of organizers and the number yeah. of staff running the shows that they do overseas and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think also each person is taking on a Too lot much. more. Or yeah. like you said, or maybe just too much that it becomes hard to just balance everything. Yeah, but that makes sense though. Like I, I, I get what you're saying. It's and it's also, not easy to do. It's not easy. It's but a then big hire more grown stuff. a lot so much in the last two years as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about how yeah. many more like the the women's uh, the women's the, yeah, it's the biggest line you know, the bikini ever. and stuff like that. Mm. I mean, I remember going to a show when was it a year ago? Can't remember. The the girls' bikini line had like seventy five. I know the show you something? did, the Summer there Bodies you did, there was many I think, women. yeah, Summer um, Bodies 2019 was So that's was also 19. the thing, like when there's that many people in a show and the judges have to judge that Like that people, I understand. Like how difficulty. you're not going to run late. You know, that's yeah. also, but sure. But then even, don't say you're not allowed to sign up and then because they want more money on the day, they're like, okay, fine. They're open. You can sign up, but you can sign up, you can sign up. That's exactly what happened with my, with my show. It was, okay, this is the amount of athletes that can sign up. Okay, I think it was... I think it was 350 initially. Okay, cool. Then, like you say, oh no, we need more money. Or we uh, not we, we need, want <laughs> we want more money. So let's open up for another hundred athletes. Now you've taken that number of three fifty and now you're up four fifty. And, and you've oh, you've given another thirty bikini girls a chance. You've given okay, I'm not gonna go bodybuilding side because that's never big, but like maybe men's physique or anything along those. You've opened that door now with obviously all the height categories in men's physique. You've added another 20 oaks to that now. Then next minute your number's gone up through the roof there. Now yeah, and you're finishing at one in the morning. Now you're going to finish at one in the morning. Damn straight. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what's one of the biggest things, a lot of people, it's not even that the industry's growing. I think a lot of people are just going over yeah. to MPC. Yeah. And yeah. because of all these people that are all of a sudden, like the Eye Candy and um, the NPC African show now in December, yeah, like there was way more people than I expected. Yeah, I it was a lot. There it was, was a lot. A, like, yeah. I mean, my lineup had how many guys in it? 
Yeah. Like the men's physique lineups are huge. The women's lineups are big. The bodybuilding lineup is probably the biggest bodybuilding lineup I've ever seen. Yeah. Is it? Okay. There, and people, there, I mean, usually like people, like a show like you did, people just locally will come. Now Oaks from Cape Town, people from Durban, was Western Cape. Everyone, everyone. Every, I mean, actually majority, I think majority of the athletes in my lineup were actually from Cape Town and stuff mm. like that. There were actually very few guys <laughs> that I knew. From I was Joburg. like, oh, okay, you're from Joburg. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, it's obviously okay. it's, it's growing. That's, but that's the thing. But that's what they've got to take into their planning you need processes to for, the growth. Yeah. for 2022 and 2023 and the years to come. Okay, we've got a high influx of people coming in now. Everyone is tired of, let's say, another federation. Now they want to move to our federation. So now we need to start catering. Okay, we've got to maybe allocate it over a two-day period instead of a one-day period, you know, Trying to cram a show in one day with the numbers of athletes growing, it's not, it's not going to work anymore. You're yep. going to have to do it over a two-day period, mm. whether you do, you know, these categories on the Friday, cool, and then you do these categories on the Saturday, yeah. and that's that. But at it's, the end of the day, I mean, even with all of that being said, I mean, we don't know what it's like running a show. No, but that's the thing. We I don't, don't even yeah. want to know how... F- like stressful it is. Oh yeah, yeah no, I can like imagine, that. and I know the people from NPC. And that's I mean, let's be honest. Really I'm hectic. guilty of it, and every single athlete is guilty of it. You know, we all run to the organizers oh, and mm. asking them millions and millions of questions and this and that and that, and like, <laughs> you know, it's very like they must get very overwhelmed because yeah. everyone's going to the same one person. So but it's also hectic. If you've taken the responsibility, don't be ugly to the people that are paying a salary. That's because true, everybody I've seen it many times happen to me. You go up to the organization, or organizers, you talk to them. And you calmly. Get a, you, you get a back end. Yeah. Or you get something where it's like, just shut up. Like literally I've been told, like I went to someone a while back and I was like, where's registration? And he's, he was just like down there. So I'm like, where's down there? He's like, I don't care. Just go look for it. You and see. I was like, bro, you're the organizer of the show. Don't talk to me like this. All I did was ask you where registration was. It's literally not a complex see. question. But that's the like, thing. don't talk to me like that. Mm. I just paid 4,000 rand to enter your competition. Now you're telling me down there he doesn't care. Yeah, you see, that's the like, problem. You know, I agree with you. Like, it doesn't take a lot to be to And be I've kind. done many federations, so it could be anything, guys. Yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> not take calling a lot. Anyone to, out. doesn't take a lot to be kind, though, bro. Like, like I know? understand, you know... The first 10 people you kind and then slowly but surely you're getting a little <laughs> yeah. bit more irritated. <laughs> yeah. But then don't have that responsibility. If you can't handle it, don't have it. Exactly. That's, that's, you know, if you can't, if you're not the type of person that can handle, you know, people coming up to you the whole time asking for help or guidance or something, then you're not doing it. For, then you're in the wrong spot. Then like then if, we, if, if Chris has 50 kids a day asking him questions and he's ugly to, a, to just one kid, mm. People won't be like, oh no, but shame. He's got forty nine other people asking him the same question. Mm-hmm. It's Chris. That's your job. Bro. But that's Handle the thing. It. But that and I, 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 it's it's true because I mean I'll have fifty kids a day ask me the same damn question, and my, you can tell I my irritation my that. irritation level starts going up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I could never. But like at my school, we have this. Uh, like we do life coaching there. So if you're a first year teacher, you do this life coaching stuff, and you work with things. Like you get taught in the life coaching, it's one-on-one sessions on how to handle this type mm, of stuff. Yeah. And when you've got 50 questions being asked, yes, your irritation levels will go up, but there are certain measures that you've got to put into place yeah. that help it's you come back one, down to earth. It's not that one child's exactly. fault that 49 people before you exactly. have the same So image. you know what? you just got to – you just have to – uh, it comes down to biting the bullet and literally if you are rude to that one child, you're going to know about it that you were rude to that one child. He's either yeah. going to go tell his parents and the parents are going to contact the school and then you're in shit. So it's, it's, it, it comes down to just handling all of that pressure and handling everything that's thrown at you and just taking it with a pinch of salt, biting the bullet and then, you know, you can take your frustration out later. Go to the gym or punch a bag or punch <laughs> a bullet or something, bro. Sure. <laughs> So we're in a very off topic from our That's fine. New Year's resolution. That's fine. <laughs> we'll finish off with mine. Yo, yo. After yeah. your post today, I actually quite like that. I think Kieran and I both like that. We both <laughs> yeah, commented so on it as well. <laughs> yeah, so for me, my I would say since I started competing, it was and I've had I wouldn't say many relationships, but it's been an issue within relationships that I've had. It's you know, why won't why can't we go out for dinner or why won't you just have one drink? Why won't yeah. you just have any of this? And yes. I'm like, well, 
these are my goals. Unfortunately, if you don't agree with them, like I've never stopped you from you know, yeah. doing something that you want to do, yeah. but don't stop me for doing something I want. Just because yep. you're not willing to sacrifice what I'm willing to sacrifice doesn't mm. make my sacrifice Exactly, bad. yeah. And that's how I was. And it was, it was a relatively small issue, but it became, but the biggest thing was it was an issue with me. It was, mm. you know, I would be unhappy yeah. about having to sacrifice certain things. Mm. You know, me being more open to, you know, having one drink, two drinks on a weekend exactly. doesn't mean I'm, you know, giving up. It doesn't mean that I'm, like I had a, a guy comment today, he's like, how, do, how how are you going to manage it, you know, not caring and not tracking? I'm like, bro, that's not going to happen. I'm no, still going to care. you're always going to track. I'm always, always going to know what I'm eating. It's just... Yeah. Just because you're not competing, you're still going to be putting your body I still want to look my best. A lot yeah, of work. Yeah, exactly. You still have to be in shape. You have to, you're going to have to be fitter than yeah, you've ever been yeah. before. I mean... And you're not going to be able to do that without eating properly yeah, and training exactly. properly and stuff like, like that. Like, obviously, I mentioned caring about what fat and this fat, what I mean is off the gym, I'm not going to care if it's, you know, fat from an avo or fat from peanut butter or yeah. pe like peanut, like I would always be like, no, peanuts or legumes. I'm not, I can't eat peanuts. I'll eat almonds or macadamia. Yeah. Now I'll be like, bro, if I have peanuts instead of almonds, it's not the end of the world. I'm not competing. It's not exactly. Like it's not like I'm going to say, yeah. okay, well, let me have yeah. 10 blocks You're of cheese. Gonna, you will always look good, but... Your focus is to be able to perform yeah. good, not just like look I, as, yeah. And I'm gonna eat Put to on a perform better. I'm not, and die. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go and eat McDonald's before yeah. a race. Yeah. I'm still gonna eat cleverly, smart to be able to perform my best yeah. when I do a bicycle race exactly. or even do a ride. Like previously, if I like, I would do a few charity ride cycles or whatever and borrow someone's bike. And I would fast. I would be like, no, I can't have any, you know, drink with the carb in it because I'm trying to be as lean as possible. Oh, I can't have, yeah. you know, some of those goos because I want to try to be as shredded as possible. Now no, I'm being like, to I'm going to have a goo because I want to ride, ride have, faster. And you're going to have a pasta the night before yeah, to pump the exactly. carbs. Yeah. Like it's, it's a whole different lifestyle of competing and then cycling. It's, it's competing, oh, I can't have this food, I can't have that, I can't have that. At length now you're doing the cycling. Now you've got to adapt to what a cyclist eats yeah. in a sense though. Like, yes, you're still going to be ripped. You're still going to be lean regardless. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing 150 Ks tomorrow. I need to have my pasta. I need to have a banana in the morning when I wake up. I need yeah. to have my goo. You need to have all of that stuff in line because it's, you can't sit there and be like, oh, no, I can only have half an ever because I'm cycling. No, that but doesn't it's again, work. It it's a whole different game I now. I think it all just boils down to like what you said. It's just because... You do it and it makes you happy and mm. you're happy with sacrificing things in order to, Facts. you know, pursue that yeah. certain goal. You know, just because someone else would never be able to do that doesn't mean that yeah, it's, it's bad wrong. that you do. It was, it was just I get, I mean, I, and I'm not even lying, I, I've got multiple questions from guys like, why are you in real estate? Why would you want to work for commission? Or Which I think is a stupid question. I think, why would you want to work for a, a basic? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and everyone's different that's, so like someone yeah. that and wants to yeah, and it's like oh but you got to work on your weekends and stuff like that and it's like you guys don't understand like yes I had to, I do work on a lot of my weekends and stuff like that but it's not the whole day yeah I'm not sitting in an office my entire Saturday mm. and Sunday you know I go to one of my listings or let's say I've got three viewings and it's at 11 11 30 and 12. No, yes, that's an one hour out of my entire Saturday that I'm working. And chances are I've made a sale as well. Yeah. And then after that, I get to enjoy the rest of my Saturday and the rest of my weekend. What's the problem? I think that? the thing is people, it's like some people, like their personalities are different. Yeah. You know, like you want to have that because you enjoy the stress of, you know, maybe not making any money this month and it motivates you to work harder. You Like obviously the stress isn't enjoyable, but you do enjoy like, well, I just enjoy being, what I being, do. Yeah, yeah, but also like if you have a bad month, you're motivated because of the stress of like, oh, I need to make more money this month or I need to perform better, yeah. you know, and you, you enjoy a stressful environment. You know, like my mom, she said she could, she loves teaching. Obviously that's her passion, mm. but she says like she could never have to fire someone. She's had to do it, but that, she said that's the worst part of a job. Mm. But she says she can't imagine having to make a sale. Yeah. She can't imagine having to, you know, try obviously like let's say parents coming to school, she's technically making a sale to win them over yes. or whatever. But like she can't go like 
do what my brother and dad are doing and sell a machine. Like, that's just not a personality type. Yeah. yeah. So, like, those people that are asking questions, their personality it, it, types it are just different. Not everyone exactly. I mean, listen, I mean, people will think oh, it's not necessarily that easy to sell a house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, it's n- you've got to know kind of what you're doing. Yeah. And like you said, it is very personality dependent, you know? Like, if I've got nine viewings in a day, by the end of that day, I'm going to be finished. I'm probably yeah. going to be grumpy i'm gonna be hungry <laughs> like i'm not gonna want to be there but when the client rocks up i'm cheerful and happy mm. and 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 act like it's my first appointment for the day and you have to you yeah know, it's just but it's just it's different personality types like people enjoy swimming i hate swimming yeah. doesn't mean people that enjoy swimming are I'm bad doesn't mean i'm swimming. bad like whatever your preferences <laughs> are if you enjoy having yeah. a set salary and having the comfort of knowing you're gonna get it so let's say a set salary cool that's fine it's not like you're a bad person or less hard working yep. or any of that. It's, you know, you're still working as hard. You're still probably yep. working the same amount of hours. My favorite part is the fact that, like, it all depends on how much work you put in, you know? Like, if you want to earn, every, like, this much, this amount every single month, you can. Then you just got to make sure that you put in enough work to actually do that. Yeah. And if you do it, then that's fine. Then you know, then you, you you're gonna you're gonna reach that goal. With other jobs, there's pros and cons <coughs> of all jobs, though. There's pros and cons because, like, exactly. if I look at my mom, I would say, in a day, she actually works more hours than me. Yeah, hundred F- percent. Physically, you know, obviously, like sometimes, like I don't know, she's at school working, whereas I don't feel like I'm working. So in my mind, so I'm but also she enjoys she enjoys yeah. what she does. So she's, also, she's yeah. never she said there's never been a day where she said she doesn't enjoy what she does. So yeah. obviously then it's her calling. Yeah. And cool. But she I've seen like she will have to go to, you know, certain she has obligations to go somewhere. And you know, sometimes for me, I hate the obligation of doing that. Mm. For her, it's like, oh, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. You know, so that's my personality types and everything that people do it. And, you know, what one person does, what other person yeah. does, it doesn't matter, you know, what they're doing. If that's for them, that's cool. And obviously, I mean, there's tons of people that would do a job that they hate every single day just, just to, to get, get money. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, Chris, you've seen teachers at school. They don't care about kids. They don't care about anything. It's just a secure income that they know, that's okay, cool, thing. I'm going to get paid. Yeah, well, that's something you get taught at university immediately as well. It's everyone jumps into teaching because they're like, okay, it's a set salary, um, you get your holidays. Uh, it's secure job security as well because there's, I mean, teachers are wanted everywhere. You saw them going to get fired unless, like, that's the thing. In a short period of time, yeah. you were just hired. Yes. So, but that's that's not that's the thing that they tell you at university. That's not the way it should be. Like, yeah, of course, everyone will tell you teaching is a passion, and that's why some people will be like, I can't do that because it's 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 really is something that you're molding you know, the future, so you actually have to care. Y- yeah, you, these are like you know, and that's where that's where my argument comes in. Teachers don't get enough respect for what they do. We are literally molding the future of future generations to come. Yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, there are certain aspects where you know. You don't get taught this at school that you do in life. Like that will always be a, a, an argument for another day. Um, You'll never be able to teach. Yeah, that but you, that's stuff that you've got to learn by yourself. Yeah. But there's certain little aspects, and that w- us as teachers teach that is going to help that person to become the doctor that they want to be, or to become the, you know, actuarial scientist that they want to be. Yeah. In. All of those things, that's that's the reality. And yes, okay, maybe not everything is exactly what they learned in high school or what they do in university. Might be two different things, but we still put a foundation in place for them to get to where yes, they need to you gave to them be. something so that they were able to build exactly. on. Exactly. But I, mean, I think so. it's in Switzerland or somewhere where every teacher has to have their doctorate. And, you know, yeah. and, and but I mean, South, South Africa mm. especially, teachers are definitely underpaid. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. many other places in the world, they are underpaid yes. as well. But there's countries, you know, where teachers are making the same as a doctor. Where teach- yeah. And I mean, that's right. But that's Switzerland. I think, I think it's, it's, yeah, either Switzerland or Sweden. It's one of the and two. And so, where, whichever yeah. the place it is, I think it might be Sweden. Yeah. They've got the highest um, ad, ex, um, admissions in yeah. universities yeah. because those kids are being taught by people that are paid well so that they... So they give more yeah. because the yes. moment you're dealing with so much as a teacher, mm. and then at the end of the month you be, you you know you get a salary that's like sometimes not enough to survive. Yeah. Then you're like, well, why am I caring so much yeah. about these kids if I'm not getting anything in exactly. return? Yeah. yeah, look, it's it's always going to be it's other countries value their teachers for what they are, um, like uh, either Sweden Sweden or Switzerland, one of the two. 
teaching is the highest paid profession in the country because they acknowledge the teachers for what they actually are doing and that is building the foundation, being the blocks, foundation blocks for those people to become doctors, engineers, whatever they want to be. Um, whereas in South Africa, it's just like, oh, it's just another job. You something, yeah. you just th- you just there to teach. And it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's sucks, silly because as a parent, you're like, well, I can't do this myself. Mm. Let me send them off to someone exactly. who I'm going to underpay. Exactly. That doesn't make sense. That, that, that's what it is. It's literally that. It's, you know, uh, a parent can't do that, what we do. Yeah. It's, it's, and proof was on the online when we were all online, having the kids at home and that stuff. Yeah. The parents used to come to us and they were like, we don't know how you guys do it. We could not deal with our children for the eight hours of teaching in that day. They drove us freaking mad. And we're like, oh, that's now you expect, <laughs> we do every day. expect us to do it yeah. Every, yeah. every single day. You expect us to do it, but we do it because we care about the children and we want them to yeah. become something that they want to be when they grow up. So, mm. but sure, anyway, it's an argument for it. I could never day. do it. I can't even imagine how difficult it is to be. Literally. A like, that's even, why you have even to care. Helping kids and guiding kids. You know, along with regards to what they want to do after school. Yeah. Like, I mean, how do you, when you're 17, 18 years old, how do you know what you want to do with the rest of your life? Yeah. You have an mm-hmm. idea, but you could, I mean, for example, me, I had an idea when I left school. I was like, cool, I'm going to study this, I want to do this, I want to yeah. do this. After two years, I dropped out of Arsenal, and it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. Yeah, so it all, it all, there's not all a single day where I've looked yeah. back and be like, I regret dropping out. Yeah. Because yeah. I would never, I wouldn't be where I am now if I did. I'd probably still be studying. Mm. Yeah, Ugh, but that's all arguments for another day. That is. <laughs> argument that us as teachers, yeah, are never gonna win. Bro. So <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt. But okay. that's varsity. Yeah, like varsity is very different to school. Yeah, like very. Nothing. Va- you don't have Nothing. to have varsity in life. You have to yeah. have school. You have to have school. Like of 100%. course, varsity has a place and it does amazing things for people, but. If in you had to weigh aspects, up the two, which yeah. is more important, schools definitely yeah, more important. Far. Well, well, you, way yeah. more. You, can't, well, you can't even get to varsity if you don't have school yeah. anyway. So. <laughs> like, like if you look at obviously what you learn, obviously you know you get more real life experiences in, in all varsity, honesty, but you learn so much more and you get so much more molding in school. Yeah. You know, honestly, like even in my first like two years of varsity and stuff, like a lot of the stuff was things that I had done in school anyway. Like, yeah. you know, I was sitting there in lectures and things and I'm like, I've actually done all of this. Like but it's because you went to an IB school, so that's you why. Know, a lot of yeah. it was covered. That's why. Anyway, guys, thanks for the first banter podcast. Yeah. Shot, boy. First on 2022. <laughs> yeah, guys, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it.